Welcome everybody, my name is Alex, I'm the product manager for Factory Automation Learning Systems at Festo Didactic and today we're going to show you our new MPS system, MPS 403, which is our new um, flagship system in the MPS uh, line. MPS 403 is the first system of the MPS 400 series and is the successor of the MPS 203 i4.0. So let's start with the differences between the MPS 203 and the MPS 403 system which we have here. First of all, you can see that the first station is now a bigger station. It's a 700 millimeter station compared to a small 350 millimeter station in the MPS 203. We now have three stack magazines here instead of one, so we can distribute directly different colors of the pot into um, the process. So the conveyor belt you can see here is, uh, has a universal attachment point for different kinds of motors. So we will offer an upgrade package for AC technology later on, so you can exchange the DC motor, which comes along with the system, with an AC motor and an AC drive, so you can deep dive into AC um, technology, learning content-wise. The next station, the joining station, is uh, pretty much the same as uh, it was before uh, in the MPS 203. However, we expanded, as you can see here already, the augmented reality to all three stations, and we, we also expanded the content of the augmented reality scenes here in those stations. The third station, um, we, had a, we had a couple of uh, changes in the third station. You can see here directly there is that there are only two slides instead of three slides. We, um, there are still three ways to go for the product, like meaning slide one, slide two, and the third way would be here on the conveyor belt. So the system is directly designed to be expanded by another station so the, the product can be passed here easily along the manufacturing line. So there is no need to upgrade the system in any kind of way to attach other systems or other stations uh, as compared to the MPS 203, which was originally designed as a closed system. Moreover, you can see here in the third station that we have um, added um, height adjustment, an automatic height adjustment for the RFID reader and writer head, because we manufacture two different uh, products here in the um, MPS 403. We have the conventional um, pot with a normal cap, and we have the, the pot with a microcontroller on top, which is just a little bit higher, and since the specs of the RFID require a very uh, short reading distance for the RFID tag, so the RFID reader and writer head needs to move up and down, which it does automatically depending on the workpiece height, which is detected in the system. Here, this is one of the, the, the major improvements we, we did on the third station. This is a small IoT device based on a small microcomputer with a webcam and there's a machine learning algorithm running on the software, so which, was, which is a part of artificial intelligence. So what's happening here is that the camera um, is taking constantly pictures of the two slides and the software in here counts the numbers of work pieces on those two slides and reports them in one way or another within the system. The idea here is to introduce the concept of IoT retrofitting, meaning introducing new IoT devices to legacy systems, upgrading them without interfering too much with the system, providing new data to um, have more information, to do more qualified decisions, and to um, free up new business models and revenue streams. Although artificial intelligence and machine learning is not meant to be very deep dived here in the system, we still want the users or the, the students rather to um, learn and, and get um, accustomed with those uh, technologies uh, so that they can understand how to use them and how they facilitate their day-to-day -day business in the uh, manufacturing environment. Coming back to the first session, you can see we added a huge HMI touch display, which was uh, one of the requests 
um, from from you guys. So we we we, took, we um, incorporate a lot of feedback from the MPS two hundred three, which was our most successful product so far, and try to improve it as 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 much as we could. So we in integrated practically all your feedback. Uh, so this is a, a touch pa uh, panel, a Siemens touch panel. The whole system comes uh, in a Siemens version uh, for now with the Siemens S7-1500 PLCs. That's why there's a Siemens touch panel in here. We are working on the Rockwell version already. So the PLCs will also change for Rockwell ones and, and there will be a Rockwell touch panel also. So on the touch panel, you can see different kinds of things. Um, for example, you, you, you see the status of the three stack magazines. You can do some, some configuration on the uh, conveyor belt. Um, but the mo most important thing is the interaction and the, the configuration parameterization of the smart sensors, which leads us to those uh, three IO-Link based smart sensors, each, um, each one on, on a different stack magazine here. Here, this is an ultrasonic sensor. This is a, a laser sensor and this is a capacitive sensor, all IO-Link based communicating with the IO link brick here in front and the IO link brick will either communicate via Profinet with the PLC level or with Ethernet IP, for example, in case of uh, the Rockwell system. So the smart sensors is a, is a very important topic since uh, smart sensors provide additional data from, uh, despite from the, or except from the data reading, for example, quality data, so you can determine how good the quality of the reading is, and this will improve your overall efficiency and uh, quality. Uh, moreover, we, we exchanged the, the small screen we had here uh, with a big 27 inch um, touch screen, which is um, way easier to operate later on. And we, we, we put on um, a keyboard shelf, so, so there's still a keyboard, so you can still use a wire, wireless keyboard, but you can also interoperate with the system um, just by touching the screen. So the, the system in general is, um, the software-wise, software designed to be um, touch optimized. So usually you should find your way very easily around with just touching the screen and, and controlling the whole system. Back to augmented reality, we, we also expanded the scenes in a way that they incorporate courseware content in the future so that the learner um, gets uh, some assistance during the, the courseware uh, exercises step by step um, guided and, and supplemented by augmented reality. So far, we uh, changed the communication architecture. Uh, before, we in the MPS 203 system, we had an OPC DA communication system, uh, communication with the mini MES. Now we have an, um, with the MES and the PLC level, we have a TCP IP uh, based um, communication, uh, but we also have OPC UA communication in the system. Then we, we changed uh, a couple of things in the uh, control panel. Uh, first of all, you can see we added some indicator lights. So every Every station has now its own indicator light. That is uh, one of the smaller improvements. And another one would be that we added another 24 millimeter um, uh, um, socket for, two, for uh, a four millimeter socket for 24 volt access directly on the control panel. This is very useful since we can directly plug in four millimeter lab cables and get power from here. So we can, for example, power some sensors for the system to easily interact with Robotino in the future. The whole system um, comes with a huge curriculum consisting of 12 to 13 books, which is um, designed to be like a whole curriculum focusing on the basics of mechatronics up to a lot of advanced industry 4.0 contents. The first, of, uh, first books are available this summer. I think those are the major changes. If you have any questions, just contact us and uh, thanks. Okay.